I'm going to make some brioche. And out of the brioche, I'm going to make a tart or a coffee cake, whichever you want to call it. It's a little, actually it could be both. And I'm going to make a brioche loaf with the leftover dough. To start, I'm going to soften up some um, yeast in some warm milk. I have a third of a cup of warm milk, 100 to 104 degrees. If you don't have a thermometer for baking, you really need to invest in one. They're not that expensive, but you do need it for baking. And then I'm going to put in two and a half teaspoons of my yeast. And now I have to let this sit here for five to 10 minutes so that it can proof and get bubbly, even though I know it is active because I've used it today already. Now, one note about brioche. If you've never had it, boy, are you missing out. It is, it is so wonderful. And if you have had it, this is a pretty good recipe. So I'm gonna let that proof for a few minutes and then we'll come back and proceed with the recipe. The yeast has had some time to sit and proof. Now we're gonna proceed with the brioche. In my mixer bowl, I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And to that, I'm going to add the yeast mixture. I'm going to try to get all that yeast out of there. These are all living organisms. I want everything in there. And I'm just going to mix this lightly on the mixer just to get it blended. I have a third of a cup of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and five eggs. I also have two sticks of butter, which I'll talk to you about later. That's what makes brioche delicious. So now I'm going to add the salt, the sugar, and now the eggs. This is just making a batter, it's nothing unusual. Okay, and I have a spatula here because every once in a while the flour gets accumulated around the edges and I just want to push it down into the mixture so that everything gets moist. And you just have to wait until it all comes into a mess. It's just starting to come to a mess. As soon as all of the flour is mixed in, it's gonna look like a shaggy mess, don't worry about it. Start timing it and mix it, continue to mix it like this for 10 whole minutes. You really have to do that. Uh, in this recipe, that timing is very, very important. I'm almost there. I can still see a lot of flour on the edges. Our mixer's been on for a full 10 minutes. The dough still looks sticky. Don't worry about that. We're going to make an even bigger mess. Now I have two sticks of butter. Now the butter is soft, but it's not soft. It's got to have just a little bit of coolness to it. If you take it out and you leave it at room temperature and it gets too warm, Put it back in the refrigerator for 10 minutes. You, you, if it's too, too soft, this dough is not going to work out very well for you. So now the fun begins. We start adding the butter a couple of pieces at a time. You don't have to wait for it to get all incorporated because it's going to take a while for that to happen. So I'm just going to keep adding butter and this is going to get gloppier and gloppier. And it's almost going to look like it's not going to, you're going to look at it and say, this is never going to incorporate. It's never going to get mixed in. Yeah, it will. <laughs> Trust me. I'll show you. All right, there's all the butter in there. Now I just have to keep mixing it. I'm going to turn it up just a little and just let it keep mixing until, until it looks like the butter is almost all mixed in. That can take three or four minutes, maybe five. 
All right, I can still see little pieces of butter in there, but for the most part, it's almost all mixed in. So now I'm gonna start my timer again for five minutes this time and let it go the full five minutes. Okay, the brioche has been mixing now for another five minutes. So I can take it off the mixer. And because normally when I would make any kind of yeast dough and I put it into a bowl to rise, I spray it with cooking spray. But because this is brioche, I buttered the um, bowl. Butter brioche, buttered bowl. Everything's better with butter. All right. This is still very, very sticky. Don't worry, that's exactly the way this recipe should be. Okay, I'm going to take it out. And you're not gonna be able to get everything off the side. Some of it's gonna stick. Just get the majority of it off. Now, what I am going to do, I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap. I'm going to let it rise at room temperature for two hours. At the end of the two hours, I'm gonna uncover it. I'm gonna put some flour all over my hand and I'm going to go around the dough and deflate it, just getting it all down. I need the flour because it's still gonna be sticky. After I've deflated it, cover it with plastic wrap, and then it's going to go into the refrigerator overnight and then you can use it the next day. So. I'm going to go put this away, and we'll be back and form the tart. Here's the brioche dough that I made yesterday. I'm going to flour my board, and I'm going to take it out, and you'll see what a difference the dough is now. It's not that sticky, sticky mass. It's still got some stick to it, believe me, but not like it was. Put that away. And I'm going to cut this dough in half because I'm going to make two things out of this dough. I'm going to make a tart and make a loaf. So I'm going to take that part and put it over there for now. I don't need it. Now, what I need to do, you can see it is sticky, is I need to roll this out to approximately 14 inches in diameter. That's why I have my trusty ruler here. This tart is going to be an apple tart, um, but you could also make a pear tart, a peach tart, nectarine, whatever, plum, whatever tart you would like. And you could also make custard fillings. So this, it's very versatile. I need a little bit more. Okay, let me see. All right, I got a little bit extra here. And a little extra here. This doesn't have to be rocket science, but I just, I wanna make sure I've got a little bit. I want just there, okay. Piece of extra dough there, just push it in. Okay, now, I can get rid of my flour. Clean this up a little bit. And I've got a cookie sheet here that is lined with parchment paper. And I'm going to put this circle on it. It's going to be bigger than the, than the cookie sheet. There's a reason for that. Brush off some excess flour. Get that on there. There's another great tool, bench scraper. If you don't have one, invest in one of those too. All right, so again, I've got 14, about 14. I have an egg wash. 
just an egg and a little bit of water. And I'm gonna brush the outside approximately two inches in on the edges. Now, I'm gonna roll over two inches. And don't worry, it's gonna overlap a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, egg wash again. Just this time, just on the part that you fold it over. And this time, just fold that in half. What you're making is a nice little rim. Okay. I have a 10 inch spring form pan, which probably many of you have, and we're gonna use it for this recipe. I'm gonna undo the clasp and we don't need the bottom for this. Leave the clasp undone and fit it around your tart. You might have to just push it in a little bit here and there. Relock it, kind of pushes everything in. And now with the back of your hand, just push those edges up against the inside of the spring form just to form it into a nice ring. Then what I'm going to do is, I'm now going to, flower my hands, I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap, and I'm going to let this sit for two hours at room temperature before we fill it and bake it off. So, I'll see you in two hours. Well, here is the uh, risen brioche tart dough, and if you look at it, you can see everything's gotten a little puffy. Don't squished down on the sides, but if the middle of the tart, the flat part, pops up a little bit, give it a push down. So now I'm going to make, I'm going to fill it with something. What I did here was I took a nice skillet, I melted three tablespoons of butter, and I took three apples that I sliced up. I peeled, cored, and sliced them into pieces. I used a Macon apple. You don't want to use something like a Macintosh because that'll turn too mushy. Um, Granny Smith has too much juice, so just a Macon or a Cortland's really good. So I tossed the apples in the butter when it was melted. I added three tablespoons of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I just cooked it over medium heat until the apples became soft and kind of caramelized. And now I've cooled them off so I can touch them. And you can just dump all this in there if you want to, but I kind of like to give it a little bit of a fan and just put them all around the edges. It's a little bit tedious work, but in the end, it'll look really nice. The oven is on at 350, and we're gonna bake this in a 350 degree oven for approximately 20 to 25 minutes. And again, as I've, as I've said in the past, every oven is different, so you know, just keep an eye on it. Your oven might be faster than mine. Okay, I've kind of got a little design on the outside. I'm not going to be as fussy on the inside. I'm just going to start putting them in there. As I said, this was three apples, and it really, it, these were not giant apples. These were sort of medium-sized apples. So if you end up with a really big apple, you probably only need two. You, you could do this with pears and peaches, plums, any kind of fruit in season. I, I wouldn't use like strawberries in a dessert like this. And as I also said, you can make a custard filling, which I will put the recipe for the custard filling on the website if you're interested in a custard type filling. Now, the egg white that we used earlier to seal the edges, we're gonna put it only on the edges again 
not pressing down too hard because you got a nice puff going there. And I just want this to not deflate at all. Okay. And then I have a little bit of coarse sugar, sanding sugar they call it. And I'm just going to sprinkle that, not on the apples, but just on the edges of the bread. Okay, now, into the oven, 350 degrees, start looking at it at 20 minutes, maybe uh, 25 to 30 minutes max. Well, here is our finished brioche apple tart. I need to leave this in the ring and on the dish on at least for 30 minutes before I can remove it and before we can serve it. I don't know if I can wait that long. Here is the brioche apple tart, all cooled, and I haven't taken it out of its ring yet. The smell of apples and vanilla and butter is very strong. It smells delicious. I'm gonna just slide it off of this. I originally took it off the first pan with a large spatula and put it on here so that it would cool from the bottom. And now we can remove the ring. Voila, there you have brioche apple tart.